Okay, um, here's a video of what I do with 3D printing. Um, it, I'm nuts about it now. It makes life a lot, lot easier for what I want to do and how I want to do it. Um, people have asked me about, you know, what do you use, how do you do this, you know, do you that. I thought, mm, tell you what, let's get a video sorted. Because uh, I just simply can't be asked to write type or you know whatever I prefer to talk okay so um, we got to start off with is a uh, 3d software something that you can de design your part I'm using inventor uh, Autodesk inventor it's 2015 edition I love it it's simple it's easy when you get to know it um, and you can do so much with it. Um, in front of you here, we have um, a, a grill. Uh, it's for the DAF 2800, which I'm well I was supposed to have been finished ages ago, uh, but I've been just dilly dallying problems here, problems there, um, and I just wanted it to be perfect. However, uh, I printed off the, the the roof, which I bugged up first time round uh, I stuck it on there incorrectly tried to take it off and I ruined it um, so I thought well best thing to do really is print one off um, tell us that the, the result will be a lot lot better anyhow so anyhow so uh, we have a grill here it's 3d as you may have noticed as I've been pulling around with it and just to quickly add something to it, uh, start sketch. Uh, I want the sketch basically level with this. I know that I need uh, a flat surface around here. Where is it? Fourth one down about there, and taking about half of that there. Boom. Alright, so I'm going to extrude that and that and that. And that, and then I'm going to push it the other way. Now, what, what it does, it, it actually went into a cut mode, so it was actually going to cut it out. We're going to change that to solid. It's at 10, so we're going to keep that as well. Boom, solid. And we can put some writing on there. Uh, I can't remember what's supposed to be on there, but I'm going to leave that at that. Uh, first, we've got to save it as normal. Save, 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 save. Uh, right. So I'm leaning forward here. Uh, no, it's not a roof. It's uh, front. Oh no, no, grill. Front. There we go. Boom. Right. So that's saved. Now what we need to do is create an STL file. So save as, save copy as, and change the format. STL file. Boom. Uh, double check this, make sure it's in millimeters because you can set it to inches and uh, that really doesn't make for a good good file. Okay, so I saved it. So now we have a 3D file saved. Um, I'm going to go to my slicer. Now, slicer is basically, it, it, it is what it says on the tin. It slices your 3D item into um, layers. Now these layers are predetermined by how you set it. At present moment I've got a 3D print on the go. As you can see, 22 hours and 31 minutes. Uh, that amount of P um, ABS, but I'll go into that in a little bit detail. Right, okay, let's remove that. Import. So first of all, we're gonna import the item. Uh, it's under projects, uh, DAF 2800, grill front. There we go, you see? There's the, the front grill that we made. Well, I made. <laughs> uh, no one's going to take credit. Uh, inside here you have the process. Now I can have multiple process. So I can have process 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I can select the models that it belongs to. So I, I could do various things. I could also make one process stop at a certain height and the other one continue from that point on. So you know it depends on, on how you want to do things if you want to save more uh, filament you know it, it, there's just so much you can do anyhow 
In this example, I'm using the left extruder because the right one is knackered. Um, I do not need support. My layer level I've got at 0.1 millimeter. Uh, I have printed on 0.05 millimeters. Uh, it's not great, but it works. I'm going to put it at 100% infill. Uh, infill basically, you can see here uh, outline perimeter shells, so it would go three times around the edges. Um, and then if there's any gap in between, it will fill that gap. If I did no fill, then I would not have a, uh, 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 that gap will remain a gap. Right, so 100%. In additions, you could have uh, an outline that goes around it. Uh, I don't do that. I have a raft, so it sticks down. Infill, there you go. I can set, uh, I'm going to get rid of that one. Um, I can set the angles that these, uh, the extruder go so in 90 so 90 degrees and um, zero degrees so it will go uh, squeeze 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 and then next layer squeeze 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 squeeze, squeeze. so you know um, this is the, the the support side live so you can have the amount of support that's given so the higher the support the denser the material will become um, if you look, make it less, then it's more sparse. So, you, in this case, it will print squares, as it were. Um, and at 6%, it's going to be large squares. If I increased it, the squares will get less and less. But you'll use more filament. Temperatures is ABS, so that's up to 30. Build platform, I've got 120. Do not use 130 because you burn the uh, cabling out like I've done so do not go above 120 there's no need to anyhow cooling well with my printer there is no additional cooling it's the cooling fans that are on my printer are just for the extruders not for cooling your item G code you can change uh, the Z axis offset so if you not managed to get that level right with your build plate add a bit of to say that the build plate is, you know, it should be lower than it really is, so it will then sort of drop the build plate by 0.45 millimeters on the first layer, and it will be offset continuously throughout the print like that. Um, makes life easier. And then speeds, speeds for my printer, which you'll see in a sec, do not go over 60. However, as you can see, I've got percentages. So if you want it a fast outline speed, which is feasible, um, but the, uh, the support structure, you know, it, it is delicate, you want to slow that down, you can set that different. You can also set the uh, the price tag per kilo. Uh, I've asked Simplify 3D to add a second one because I've got a dual extruder. But um, yeah, 18 pounds per kilo. So you set that and in advance you've got Hollows. Here's the layer modification. So start printing out and stop printing out. This is what you would use to, to set uh, start a process at one layer uh, at one height and then stop it another. And you know, so you can sequentially have processes going. I'm sorry for the swaying, but I'm holding this and my fingers are getting a bit. Mm. Okay, so um, that's just a quick overview of that. Um, so as you can see, uh, we have our, our uh, item, we've got a print process, we've got some um, tools that we can have a look at things, but we're just going to shoot straight to what it wants. Ooh. As you can see, right, and here's a, a slight design issue that I have now. And that is the walls aren't thick enough all around. So as you can see here, like this wall is glass has not been thick enough than this I'm going to cheat see if this works mm, yeah. got to go less than that Bloody hell. oh and I want to lower that as well go to 38 okay. uh, I've cheated there we go see now there's a lesson for you your nozzle diameter will dictate what it will and will not print. If these walls are less than 0.4, if your nozzle is 0.4 millimeters, it will turn around and say, ain't printing that. 
right? But I cheated. I lowered low the nozzle diameter just to, to cheat. I have to increase the, the uh, extrude multiplier, which is the amount of extrusion that takes place. However, you can see here, right? It's just one line on the inside and a double line on the outside. I can analyze this this item. Uh, see, this, these are all the layers. I can analyze this and just to give you a better understanding, it's a cross-sectional view. If I just zoom out and do the x-axis, you can see it's just chopped it in half. Right, this is so you can analyze it. Right, there we go. Uh, let's move it slightly forward. There we go. The more I zoom in, you can see the layers individually. So you can analyze, see where the failures are or where you're going to have drama so that if, uh, if they're, you're not using support, where it might just fall down. All right, so we're going to turn that off. Mm. Now with Simplified 3D as well, you can see here, it's going to take me two hours to print this and 42 minutes. It's going to use 8.224 meters, uh, considering that one reel has got about 333 meters of filament. Um, it's, you know, there's just quite, there's not a huge amount. And it's calculated the cost based on this, or based on this. I don't know, it could be uh, the weight, All right? But I've got it set at, at uh, ABS if I remember correctly so it's 0.44 uh, pence right for this print and then once I, I, I'm, I'm happy I'll go begin print over USB or I'll save tool pass to disk now this will allow me to put it on an SD card I have no reader for an SD card any amount of amendments I make before I let the whole print continue all the way through I, it's just going to be a pain in the ass so I, I don't tend to do that. I tend to go over USB. So let's pretend I have print, pressed print, and we'll go to my printer. This printer is a one Harno, one Harho uh, Duplicator 4S. Uh, oops, sorry, fingers. Uh, the S stands for steel. It means it's got a metal structure rather than the plastic one, which is the X. Uh, four is the fourth in a series. And you can see, there's, uh, I've had to deal with the, the, the cable at the back for the heated build plate. If you're going to print ABS, heated build plate is a must. It is printing a um, SB3, uh, SB300 um, Thermo King. Oh, yeah, I have to think about that. Um, and as, as you know, that's about 22 hours, you saw that earlier. Right, okay. <laughs> Having a, a look at what's going on, you can see two fans. These two fans are not for your item, these are for the extruder. Without them, you'll see the. And I'm going to put my fingers in front of the camera and hopefully point them out. Uh, where's my finger? There we go. Right. Uh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Right. See where my finger's pointing there? There's a little lever and there's a little hole. This lever forces the filament against a uh, an extruder gear it, basically the gear pushes the filament into the head um, now if there's not enough pressure it will start to skip and then it'll start to shred your filament and then you got the, the teeth will then become a bit clogged and then with the clogging um, it will just not extrude at all uh, I've had that that's why they these are gray they should be black um, I've replaced them twice already because I didn't realize my fans had died so they weren't cooling and then all of a sudden it, the, the, it, the shit hit the fan in the manner of speaking right so uh, there's two stepper motors that are pushing uh, filament down but not for this print right as you can see I see get the focus right there you go you can see the layers there nice and fine they're 0.1 millimeters high it looks a bit messy there's going to be some post work required there's one of the attachment uh, lugs that I've got so that will uh, allow this item to be attached to the trailer 
uh, you can see some of the holes uh, for the, the, the exhaust of the machine of the um, Thermo King being made there just on the edge and on top you can see the squares oh, let me just focus that right you can see the squares the squares are actually the support um, not infill they are set slightly off the um, off the item which you can actually set you, you can dictate yourself it's not very clean unfortunately but I'm going to leave it at that um, the infill as you can see there's gaps in the wall and also in the, the, the mounting lugs these gaps are because the infill is not set at 100% And there we go. Now on the digital display, hopefully I can show this to you. There we go. You can see it, it's been running for three hours and 13 minutes, 8% done. Uh, right extruder is at 74 degrees Celsius. Why? Because the left extruder is at 225 out of 230. Um, it's just heating up because the, uh, the left one is hot. Uh, and the platform is at 118 which uh, you know of 120 and that's it that is 3d printing now uh, do I have an item here lying about where's me me roof me roof it's all about the roof about the roof right here we go here yeah. this is the the roof you can see the layers come out uh, and are very obvious but a bit of sanding and they become nice and smooth like a baby's bottom um, you can also see part of the DAF still attached to it whilst I try to rescue this and inside you can see lots of lines um, this is where the support uh, puts a base down for the actual item to be mounted on not a lot you can do about that apart from sand it down um, it sands down quite nicely and once you've got it put together um, you'll be laughing uh, I tend to also use a, a filler primer and that will just add to the finish and we'll be laughing so but you can see there if, uh, you can see a curve right it produces a curve nicely I can't remember what what this was set at this could have been 0.2 uh, so at 0.1 you'll get more lines and a bit more closer together Right, on that note, I hope that, uh, that gave you a slight insight. I'm happy to add more to it. Um, if that's, you know, if there's any uh, questions, queries, uh, wants and desires. But with regards to Slicer, uh, a Slicer being the, 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 the software that chops it into layers, uh, ST3, uh, S3D, is I find is, is pretty much the best one out there but that's personal preference so don't take my word for it um, I'm just this is what I'm comfortable with now but you got free ones out there you got uh, Slicer 3D I think it is Rep G uh, Cura uh, Kiss Slicer I think there's as well uh, um, and the ba you basically do the same it's the amount of input that you as a user have to the software and how that is represented to you in order for you to use it those that's where the differences lie um, obviously there's an internal calculation uh, that happens algorithms basically white man's magic uh, I have no idea of what, what that that is but um, that also dictates how good it slices um, and hey presto uh, in the end, what you have is a CNC machine um, because you're generating a G-code. A G-code is a coordinate system where it would give instructions to the machine uh, as to what to do. So move left X amount of distance, uh, move right, up, down, left, right. And the extrude is, is basically also setting there to say how much to extrude, so at what rate. Um, so you could effectively use Simplify 3D with any um, 
CNC machine when you think about it but uh, when it comes to uh, uh, like tool rotation so you know if you've got a milling machine how fast is milling machine is going to go uh, I, well I don't know how you would resolve that but if you've got um, fixed speed on uh, the tool so it's rotating at I don't know 24,000 RPM and that's it um, you could effectively still use this but uh, I would say this is pure, purely aimed for um, printing so don't take too much of a chance um, yeah let me know see what you think thank you very much and have a good day